Hey guys, how's it going? So maybe that title and that thumbnail were just a little bit rude and I apologize for that, but hear me out. You know, when I first started flying with my Mavic Pro, I really did struggle to get good footage. You know, it really did suck. I didn't have any of the settings right. In particular, the gimbal settings and the drone input settings. All my footage was really jerky and really not fun to look at. So I wasn't willing to share it with my family or my friends or anybody. And so it took me a while to kind of narrow it down to what the best settings are for the gimbal and the drone input. And so that's my goal for you guys is to know what numbers to use. But, you know, I'm guessing this isn't the first video that you've watched on the subject. I know that I watched quite a few videos and some of them were pretty good. But overall, you know, my problem with many of them is that they'll, to they'll tell you what numbers to use but they don't explain why. They don't tell us this is why you should use this number. And so that's what I hope to achieve with this video. I'm gonna show you guys what I've kind of narrowed it down to for those. But I also want you guys to understand why I'm choosing those because in the long run, I want you guys to learn how to become better pilots, better videographers with your drone. And if I just tell you what numbers to use, you know, they're not gonna apply every single time. So every situation is gonna be a little bit different. And so that's why I hope to do, I hope to educate you guys not only on the numbers, but, but why I'm choosing those. So anyway, we're headed out to the lake today. We're gonna hook up the camper and the boat. We're gonna go out to Lake Sakakawea and hopefully I can get some nice scenery. Hopefully the weather stays like this and cooperates with us. And hopefully I can get some cinematic footage to go along with this video. And I'm gonna do some comparisons of the different settings just so you can see what they look like side by side. So let's hook up, let's get down the road and see what I can show you guys. Man, just look at this place. Isn't it beautiful? This is why I love to come here. This is Lake Sakakawea, North Dakota. It is one of the largest lakes in the upper Midwest. And we come here quite a bit. We do some camping here, we do some fishing here, but I just love being here. It's a beautiful weekend. The weather is beautiful, it's cooperating. That doesn't happen too often, so. Uh, if you guys are ever in North Dakota, come to Lake Skakwea and check it out. Hey guys, first of all, thanks for stopping by. This is 51 Drones. My name is Russ. Feel free to click on that subscribe button. Also click on that little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, I'm about to give you a lot of information. So I have just a suggestion. You might also wanna click on that little like button and then this is gonna be saved in your liked videos folder. So you can always come back and check on those settings. Now, if you're watching this more than likely, it means that you are in a constant state of how do I get my footage to look like that? You know, you wanna impress your friends and your family you know, your, maybe your clients, you know, your social media followers and things like that, but it's all very overwhelming, especially for a beginner. Trust me, I know. And I'm hoping that I can help you move on from the how do I stage into the this is how you do it stage. So first let's talk about the drone input settings. When you click on the three little dots in the upper right hand corner of the DJI Go4 app, you're gonna click on that first little icon, the drone. Then you're gonna scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna click on advanced settings. Now here you're gonna see EXP, which stands for exponential curves, and then you're gonna see sensitivity and gain. First, we're gonna talk about the EXP. This is basically the input settings for when you move those sticks, the first 25%. So when you first start to engage your stick, this is gonna set how fast the drone reacts to that input in the first 25% of the movement. Well, it's approximately 25%, but the first part of the stick movement. So as you move that stick initially, this is the number that sets how your drone reacts. Basically, the lower the number, the slower the movement will begin when you adjust the sticks. Lower numbers mean more cinematic and higher numbers mean jerky and jittery. Now, let me show you some comparisons here between the settings. Um, just so you guys know, these settings are just for the normal mode. Now, when you first get your Mavic Pro, the default settings, they're, they're okay, but they're really not the best for getting cinematic footage. And so what you need to do is you need to adjust these, in particular, that middle one, the yaw, because when you start turning your drone to the left or to the right, or excuse me, when you start rotating the drone, and when you first push on that stick, like the very first part of it, you don't want your drone to turn suddenly like that. You want your drone to turn softly and gently. And so you want that number to be a little bit lower than the default when you get your Mavic Pro. So my recommendation is to set that 0.15. Now, how did I arrive at 0.15? Basically what I did is I tested each of them. I went up by 0.05 each time just to see what it looked like. And the 0.15 is what seems to be the best. And then the other one that I adjusted just a little bit was the forward right and backward left stick. 
I ticked that down just a little bit because I like to pan a lot in my videos. I like to fly sideways and I don't know, it's just something I prefer to do, but I like that to be just a little bit lower because when I first engage, you know, that pan, I want it to not jerk suddenly. I want it to move very slowly. And so I move that down just a little bit and I have it set at 0 0.20. As for the throttle, I really didn't see any difference as I adjusted that one. So I just leave that at 0.25. Now, next we're gonna move on down to the sensitivity settings. You know, there's attitude, there's brake, and yaw and point. So first let's talk about attitude. Let's show you some comparisons here as I speak to you guys. The attitude is basically how quickly the drone reacts to any input you make with the sticks. So it kind of works in relation with the EXP. The EXP sets how quickly the movement ramps up and the attitude setting adjusts how quickly the movement that you engage results in the action of the drone. Now as for the brake, that's what determines how quickly the drone reacts when you release an input for any movement. The best way to kind of illustrate this is flying straight forward and at 200, what's gonna happen is when you release that stick, the Mavic is gonna stop instantly. And you know, that's okay sometimes, but that's not gonna give you any cinematic footage. You want that drone to come to a stop nice and smoothly. So I set that to 50 because what happens is when you let go of the stick, the drone will slowly stop its movement. It's not gonna stop suddenly. It's gonna slowly come down to a stop, kind of like disc brakes on a car. And that's not only for forwards and backwards movements, it's for all other movements. So to keep every movement as buttery smooth as possible, buttery smooth, you know, why do they, why do why does everyone use butter as the standard? Why don't we use like motor oil or something like that? But anyway, you know, that's what everyone says. Buttery and silky smooth movement. But <laughs> the only time I have changed that number from 50 is when I have turned off my obstacle avoidance. I want that security to know that if I need to stop suddenly for some reason, like if I'm flying and I see something, an obstacle that's gonna be in the way or whatever, and I let go of the stick, that my drone is gonna stop right away because I don't have the obstacle avoidance on. So that's when I'll dial it up. I'll put it up to about 100 or maybe even 150. But most of the time I just leave it at 50 so I have a nice smooth stop. Now, last thing on here is the yaw endpoint. The yaw endpoint basically sets the percentage of maximum movement when you have the stick pushed all the way over. So here are some examples with the different ranges of settings. So it's set to 30, you're fully reducing the maximum speed of the drone to yaw. So when you have the stick pushed over all the way, if you set it to 250, it's equivalent of flipping the nitrous oxide switch on a drag car every time you touch the stick. So the EXP is what sets the response or the ramp time of your movement in the first kind of 25% portion of the input. And the yaw endpoint sets the overall maximum speed at full throttle, you know, like the remaining 75%-ish. I hope that makes sense, you guys. If it doesn't, comment below and I'll try to explain it in more detail. Now, lastly, right here, we have the gain. Now, what is gain? Think of gain as like the autocorrect to outside forces. A good example is with wind. Most of the time, gain is going to help you fly in the wind and as wind pushes against the drone what it does is the mavic pro will correct itself to try to stay as steady as possible so the lower gain the lower the number on the gain the more mild that correction is going to be and if you have the gain set higher when the mavic pro tries to correct itself from outside forces it's going to be kind of jerky and those movements are going to be instant and you don't want that. You want the gain to be set as low as possible. And so in this case, I set it to 80 at all times. And that's why mostly everyone always keeps it set to 80. As for the pitch and the roll and the vertical gain, just leave those at 100%. Okay, so that's the Mavic Pro input settings that you need to have so your drone footage doesn't suck. Next, let's cover the gimbal setting. So let's go back a screen and click on the gimbal icon right here. Then you're gonna click on advanced settings. Now here you have four settings. Let's do the toggle upwards, tilt to on. I always leave that on. I think it's nice to have that ability to go above the horizon. You know, some people don't like to do that, but I prefer to have that just because if I ever wanna pan up just a little bit, I have that ability. Secondly, you wanna to toggle on the synchronized gimbal pan follow because as you pan your Mavic, the gimbal will also pan slightly. Basically what that does is it removes any artifact as you pan. And so there won't be any jerky movement as you as you pan to the right or to the left. Now the other two settings, the gimbal pitch speed and the gimbal pitch smoothness. This is where it's all at, you guys. These two things I think are the most important when it comes to attaining that movie-like feel as you record. Now the pitch speed is how fast the gimbal moves. The lower the number, the slower the movement, and the higher the number, 
well, it's just silly. Set it low. I have mine set to about 15 most of the time, and I wouldn't ever set it higher than 20. Now the gimbal pitch smoothness is how fast the gimbal reacts to your movement. So set it high and you move the left wheel, the gimbal kind of acts like a sloth waking up in the morning. It's really frustrating. I don't know why you would ever want it set to that. And if you set it low, when you move that wheel, it's gonna look like your camera is having a seizure, basically. So a setting of 15 or about 20 keeps things smooth, but not so smooth that you wanna rip your hair out. That's, it's a little too late for me, but for you guys, you don't wanna rip your hair out, so don't set that number too high or too low. So in summary, you guys, here are the settings that I use on the screen, the settings that I have come to figure out what are the best to get cinematic footage over the past year and a half. What I would like you guys to do is take your Mavic Pro out and set your settings to these numbers and then come back here and comment below if it made any difference for you. I wanna know if the information that I'm providing to you guys is helping you get the footage that you're looking for. I want your footage to no longer suck. You know, when I first started flying my Mavic Pro, I just remember how frustrating it was you know, I wasn't even gonna share my footage with anybody because it was kind of embarrassing because it was all jerky and, and you know, it really just looked like a rookie. And sometimes I still look like a rookie, some of my movements and some of my recordings, but that's the beauty of editing. You can cut out all those little things. But I think over the long run, as you practice these numbers, as, as you fly your Mavic Pro more, you're gonna get more comfortable with not only having the right settings, but it really comes down to just slow movements. Moving that gimbal wheel very slowly, you know, moving your yaw very slowly, things like that. So having the numbers is really important, but what's more important is learning how to move your drone and how to move your gimbal. There's no better way to learn how to get cinematic footage than getting your Mavic Pro out there and just flying around, just practice. Go out and practice as much as you can. You know, try those slow, steady movements and that's gonna result in professional looking footage that you're gonna be proud to share with people. So don't forget to put this video in your liked folders. Click on that like button. I wanna thank you guys for subscribing and also for watching today. As always, fly safe and fly smart. Oh,